Hey, welcome back to another video in our series on this CRUD app. In this video, we're going to change the uh, edit button so it works. Right now, if we choose edit, nothing happens. So we are going to modify this existing form here, this new form, and then uh, change it to an edit form as well. So we're going to reutilize this form here. Right now, it's just create new users. But we're going to populate it with uh, any existing user, and then we'll be able to modify the changes and save it. So we'll make a few tweaks to the view and to the controller, and we will have ourselves a dual purpose form. So let's first of all start here in the uh, gadget DAO. So I'm going to rename this function as create or update. So the assumption is that uh, we can do both in the same method. So let's define what we are going to do with this uh, method. So if the ID number of the gadget model parameter is passed to us, if it doesn't have a positive value, then that means it came from the create form. So there was nothing that was already defined. However, if the ID is already for an existing thing in our database, it means it has an ID of greater than one, then we are going to update it. We're going to just change the values rather than create a brand new record. Well, where are we going to get that ID number? We're going to have to go back to the form and we're going to have to add a hidden field. So let's go back into the, uh, the, the form here called the gadget form. And right at the bottom, I'm going to add a new hidden, hidden property. So here is the new property we're going to put in. It's an input type. It's a value or type is hidden. And so it will just not be visible. And then the uh, name of it is ID, matches the property. And then the value is passed to it from the model.id. So if somebody is showing us an, an edited model here, then that value, that ID value will be something like 33 or 50 or whatever the ID number is. However, if we're getting a brand new item, this will be a just a zero, it'll be a, or a null value. And so it won't, won't have any impact at all on this. So the, pro, the point here is that when we process the form, we're going to know if it's a new item or an edited item based on this ID number. So let's go back into our processing here. So if we pass this thing a gadget model that has a, a, a real value ID, then it's, then it's edited. So let's modify the query string based on the value of the ID. So if uh, gadget model.id is less than or equal to zero, so it's a brand new object, then we're going to continue on as we did before. We're going to call the insert command. However, if the value of the ID is a positive number, that means we're editing something. And so we're going to call a SQL statement that is update rather than insert. So now if we are doing the query string for an update, it's going to be a little different. So let's change it to update, then the table name set name equals to a placeholder again. So we'll say at name. So each one of these, description equals at description, appears in equals at appears in, and so on. And that means that we are going to now define these uh, values as, a, as, a, as an update, a change, not just a, an insert. So we scroll down a little bit, and you can see that the uh, same commands now should work for the rest of it. So we have a new command, then we're going to apply these same values here. And then when we get to the last part where it says execute query, we should have a new updated item. All right, so that should be the DAO. I hope this works. We're going to test it out in a minute. But now we need to modify the controller so it works differently with the form. So here is the, uh, the controller. So we have a create method, which passes nothing. It just says, go get the gadget form. OK, so we're back here. Let's choose show gadgets. And uh, I want to go and choose the edit item. So if I click here, edit, what is the uh, URL? We're expecting an, the word edit and then a parameter, number one, so an integer. So edit is the controller's uh, action that we need to invent here. So let's go and look at the controller and make edit. OK, so we've got uh, a create method that's already kind of a good model. I'm going to copy that and paste it and turn that into an edit command. So edit, and we are expecting to edit an integer of an ID value. So we have to tell it we're going to send a new gadget model. So what is that gonna look like, gadget model? 
we need to define a gadget model and get it from the database. So let's go to the details item and we can copy these two lines because that's essentially the same function that we're trying to do is we want to grab one from the database, I'm going to fetch one, and then we're going to send it into our next uh, form here. So what's the matter here? Gadget model. No, this is just using the word gadget, so I'll overwrite that. Okay, so gadget matches gadget. ID here matches that ID. So this should allow us to bring up an edit form. Let's see if it runs. Okay, we're running again, so I'm going to choose show gadgets. And uh, I'm going to try the edit button. Let's see what happens. So I click edit. And sure enough, it fills in Geiger counter and all the rest of the stuff. Let's just see if this will be correctable. So I'm going to change the word counter to a capital and then push save. And it looks like it did work. So I saved it. Let's go back to the list. And Geiger counter is now the only result in the entire database. What in the world happened? Everything got changed to Geiger counter. Obviously, that's not what I intended to do. I just completely wrecked my database. So let's go and find out what I did wrong. So I think I did something wrong in the gadget DAO. So take a look here. It says update this, and we're going to replace everything. Sounds good. Except this statement is applied to every line in the database. What I meant to do was to say where. We have a where function, right? So where the ID equals some place value ID. So that will limit it to only one record. So let's, uh, let's see if we can fix this mess here. And uh, hopefully you didn't do the same thing as I did. So I'm going to put in a new parameter. Now I'm going to have to go back and fix the database because I've wrecked every one of the records. So let's go into the data and let's delete a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to go view the data. Looks like they're all there. And let's do a refresh. There, that's what I thought. So everything got changed to Geiger counter and all the rest of that. So let's, um, let's select all the records. So I'm gonna select the first row and then come down to the end and select the last row. Right click and delete. And yes, we're gone. Hmm, okay, so that's out. Now fortunately, I can switch back here and I've still got the same old query that I had before. So if I select all of the rows, I can reinsert them. So let's copy this. I'm going to switch back here into the query. So let's go to bond da database, create a new query, and paste this. And I think this is probably going to work. Let's go ahead and choose the green arrow. And they've all been inserted. Let's go look at the values, view data. And let's see if there's anything different. Let's refresh. And we have some new ones. We do. So now the numbers start at number 326 and go on down. So all my ID numbers are different than they were before, but I do have all the values that appear to be in here. So I like this look now. Let's see if this will run. Okay, we're going to try this again. So I'm going to choose Show Gadgets. And we've got ourselves back to the original. I'm going to edit my Geiger counter. Let's try to make the same change. So put a capital C and choose Save. And Geiger counters there. Let's go back to the lists. And this time, the only one that had an update was Geiger counter. All the rest of them stayed the same. So my SQL query is written correctly this time. And then uh, we can do edits. So it looks to me like we've got one more item. We have a delete, and then we're going to do a search form. So we're getting close to the end here. 